So yeah. what when you're where's your next focus now, Corey? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be going back to something else I came across when I was researching Zorro Ranch. I found some interesting connections in uh, New Mexico that I need to explore further that may or may not even tie in. I'm sure in some way it probably would tie back into Epstein, but it, that I'm concerned about because it, it has to do with um, the potential of children being taken. So I'm, you know, and it also ties into past research I've done in Arkansas, Arkansas and a couple other states. So I'm going to be, there's a lot of overlap there in my research, um, a lot of similar patterns I keep seeing. So I'm going to delve back into that once I'm done getting this report out. Corey, with your research, do you believe uh, that uh, Epstein, in addition to being a pedophile and a horrible individual, obviously, do you believe he's tied in with the intelligence networks? Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, no makes you think, what, make, what makes you think that, Corey? And which ones do you think he potentially is tied into? There's no way. Um, uh, first off, I don't think he's getting his, I don't think any of it's his money. I mm-hmm. think he's a, he's a player. He's a middleman they, that goes where he needs to go to perform this blackmail or that blackmail or that you know, maybe even some drug drug running in there. God knows what else. We already know about the pedophilia. Um, I think that there's a chance that, you know, from what I'm seeing with defense-related people around him, that it's some form of deep state CIA connection possibly. Um, from reports I've seen on Maxwell, it seems there could also be some Assad tie-ins on, as well. Um, it, it would be interesting to take several solid reports from various journalists and put them side by side to see the bigger bigger picture here. Um, but there's there's look, I don't I don't think it's a typical thing for an individual to be able to get, and maybe I'm wrong, but to be able to get private comms get a microwave radio set up on a tower right alongside major telecommunications companies well i don't know maybe maybe that's just rented space and you can get a license and anyone can do that i don't know but then the company goes under and they they run that under a company no one's even ever heard of before which i honestly couldn't find anything on the background of VT and T LLC. It was probably set up just for the purposes of getting those comms in place. So. Well, I can tell you this, Corey, our our radio station, Wham Talk 1600, where I do my Sunday broadcast is an AM station. And they just, they just got approval for an FM station as well. And I can tell you the years, it took years. It took a tremendous amount of paperwork and yeah. lawyers to have that happen. Mm, interesting. So, so to, for him to have his, and, 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 and of course, you know, there had to be all this documentation about serving the public and all this kind of stuff with, you know, and, and it's a very similar kind of construct with the microwave towers and all the other stuff. You know, doors had to be open for Epstein. Mm-hmm. For him to have his own, I mean, beyond doors being opened. Right. I mean, you know, the 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 the, the um, bureaucracy to get something like this through is enormous. Now, he, as you said, his land there is surrounded by oh, the former attorney general of of New Mexico, the entire King family, who are the largest landowners, I believe, in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Ties into the New Mexico government, ties into the all these people surrounding him, as you mentioned, ties into the United States federal government, let alone right. governments in the you know Virgin Islands and the like. It, it it just doesn't. Oh yeah, and he's I mean he's connected in with governors everywhere he goes, um, with you know former presidents and well, right. I mean you um, see you see there's... big name people coming into his you know and he talks about his you know all the people he's associated with right right right. So yeah, there's there's definitely a much bigger picture going on, and um, well, 
geez, they just they pushed his uh, trial back like 10 to 13 months because they have 1 million pages they have to get through, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> What's in those 1 million pages, I wonder? Well, and there was also some uh, the, in, information out there recently that there were 2,000 pages that were going to be released in the near future, right? Yeah. When did, when's that going to happen? That that was about a month and a half ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, about a, yeah, around a month ago, and and here we are, and it yeah. hasn't been released. Right. Yeah. So, but uh, there's definitely just just like with the Clintons, you know, there's major cover-ups going down. Um, major people covering for one another. Uh, shell companies, fronts. So. No one goes to those lengths right. unless they have a lot to hide. Well, and in fact, there was some information out that showed that the Disney Cruise Line, mm -hmm. one of their stops was in St. Thomas, and one of their excursions was to Little St. James Island for snorkeling. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. I have not di dived into that, though. Now, now, that's not saying that any kid that went there didn't come back. You know, I'm not, we're not right. saying that. But right. However... There had to be some transfer of money from right. Disney to Epstein, the owner of that island, for them to utilize his one land think. or yeah, his offshore think. experience, whatever it is. And was he there? Right. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I mean, it's... it's... It's very, very strange. It is. And, and you know, just real quick, I didn't, I didn't explore this further, but I just... This is kind of interesting, too, and maybe you've heard something about this. I just came across this when I was looking into um, St. Thomas because there was a little, a, just a little crossover into St. John. And I came to discover that Lawrence Rockefeller back in the 50s bought up 5,000 acres. Now, the island is only about 12,500 acres. And then he turned the deeds over to the government because he wanted it to be a national park. So it's the Virgin Islands National National State Park or something like that. And then in 2001, Bill Clinton says, oh, you know, we need to make the Coral Reef a national monument. So let's expand these borders. So before he knew it, about probably 80, 85% of that island is now national, you know, protection here. And it expands out beyond the borders of the island out into the water. There's only a population of 17,000 people that live there. And... For Rockefellers and Clinton to protect that land yeah, makes you wonder. raises a huge red flag for me. I don't know what might be going on on St. John's, but that raises a big red flag. And, and then we have this. The reason I came across this is they were the Clinton Global Initiative is working with um, a Bloomberg organization. Oh, I can't think of what it's called right now, but it's based out of St. John's. I'm like, huh, so now we have Bloomberg's involved too. So I don't know what might be going on over there, but something is going on over there. Yeah, when, when you start seeing the same names circulating, especially these names, mm -hmm. it's not coincidence. No. It's an operation. Right, exactly, exactly. So lots of operations going and on. And have you done any work, uh, Corey, on uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, his right hand squeeze, his handler, as I call her? Um, have you done any work on Ghislaine Maxwell? I have not. And the reason why is as soon as I start seeing numerous um, reporters or journalists jumping on yeah. a specific person go or topic, I go, I go the other direction. Yeah. yeah. There's too many people covering it. So I don't. I don't want to duplicate efforts. I would rather bring new information. Right. You know. And many people, uh, Corey, believe that nothing's ever going to happen with Epstein. That uh, this is going to be swept under the rug, similar as it was in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. What's your take? Oh God, I sure hope that doesn't happen. Um, I think it's most definitely going to be dragged out. But then again, you know, I thought Nixon was going to be dragged out. And look at how fast they all plot out and that shut down, which also made me wonder what information they gave up to make that end so quickly. Because mm -hmm. that, that went fast. I mean, from well, the time they started the trial, it right. went fast. Well, notice it went fast, right? And then mm -hmm. immediately as that was shutting down, Epstein blew up, right? Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. Exactly. And Which, we know, we already know there's some crossover there. Right. And I, I, I believe it's the crossover that led to Epstein coming to the forefront yet again. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good chance of that. Um, there's also that huge investigation, which I know people will look at it and they, they won't see the connections, but the big investigations that are still ongoing in Arkansas with the preferred family health care and all the bribery and fraud with the lobbyists and former senators, um, those trials that keep getting pushed back, um, sentencing that keeps getting pushed back, even though they've already pled guilty. So there's name dropping and stuff going on in Arkansas right now as well. So I, I'm like keeping my eyes on all of this because every time they keep pushing stuff back, I don't see that as, oh, it's going to be swept under the rug. Right. I see that as they're collecting yeah. more information here and something's eventually going to happen. I don't know when, but. Right. And, and that's the standard response is when things get pushed back, things get delayed. And I can understand the standard response, OK, because mm -hmm. the, the rule of law has been complete had been completely decimated by the end of the Obama administration. And right. I can see that philosophy, Corey, where people go, oh, it's more of the same. Oh, it's getting. But I truly believe that since Trump got in office, he had a clean some a lot some, not all of the dirty sheriffs yet out, but has cleaned a number of the dirty sheriffs out and have been in the process of cleaning a number of dirty judges out. Oh, yeah. And and obviously you can't bring a, a case to trial if you got dirty law enforcement and dirty judicial branch. Right. Right. And, and here's the other thing. So many of these players connect in with so many different operations yes. um, that if they don't take them down in specific orders and get the information they need from this operation over here to this operation over here, you know, I mean, I can't imagine coordinating that end of it. And also, we're talking about people that have been charged and or indicted. If those are now or pled guilty, even if that stuff's being pushed back, they're already in there. They're already on the chopping block. They're already being scrutinized. It's not like in this case, in my report back in 2010, 2012, when these investigations were going on into the governor and legislators of Virgin Islands over, and it was over a big telecommunications scandal. Um, Eric Holder kept putting a hold on the arrest teams. They had sealed indictments and arrest teams ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And he kept putting a hold on it. Now that's different. Right. I agree. And yes. and it eventually was swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. And then they later came back and they got the governor on, you know, three hundred and ninety thousand dollars in corruption for misspending money on personal da 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 da. You know, they got him on that. Now that is being swept under the rug. But this is this is a little different. I mean, we've got actual arrests and charges and indictments, and you, you, I, I don't see how he could that could just be completely walked back in the case with Epstein. You know. Well, and and, and I truly believe that that Epstein being prosecuted at this point is directly attributable to Donald Trump. That this wasn't just a coincidence. I, I truly believe, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, Corey, but, you know, um, if, uh, Trump, his life is not only on the line, but his entire family's lives are on the line. And mm -hmm. if he doesn't clean this up, yeah, it's not so, and I think from his standpoint, it's not so much his life, <clears throat> but it's his kids' lives all the way down right. to Barron. Right. And he knows if he doesn't, if he does this halfway or he does a three quarter way that after he's long gone off the face of the earth, his kids are in jeopardy. Yeah. You know, that, that just made me think of something. So, you, so you know how they'll rec he'll receive, I think for the rest of his life security detail now. Yeah. Um, will Ivanka as well, or, or, or does it not work like that? I'm just, well, uh, here's what I understand. Um, in addition, currently, right now, in addition, this I, I, I can't go, I, I'll go this far. In addition to his Secret Service protection, the president has his own private security system, which is massive in place that he pays for himself. Not okay. just for him, 
but his entire family. Right. And it's my understanding that security force will be in place for the Ever. lives <laughs> of his children and family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so he's not just protected by the standard Secret Service right. contingent, which they're, they're fine. They're good. Right. But there's an entire another very deep, very efficient layer of protection around him. Yeah, well, I would imagine so. Or I don't think he'd still be standing right now. And I don't think he would, um, I, I, you know, I, I think if you said to him, hey, uh, Don, when you're done, we're going to give your family Secret Service protection. That's all, he, that's all they need. I, I think his response would be, uh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> right. But th- that might be the case, but I got something else too. Yeah. Yeah. I, he, he's kind of a belt and suspenders guy, right? Right. Right. Not just a belt, not just suspenders, but all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, well, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a very tangled web and it's a very sinister web. But mm-hmm. I, I do believe, you know, um, President Trump is many things, love him or hate him. But he's a great reader of the public. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is why his TV stuff was so su- successful. This is why he has a handle on oh, what yeah. the public grasps onto. And I mm-hmm. believe this Epstein issue is not just a coincidence. I believe he knows that people will folk. If you start saying, well, you know, this illegal surveillance thing is horrible. And, well, uh, this is really a, a, a deep state issue. And this is how people's rights were violated. You're going to have people go, well, you know, I run an honest life, so I don't mind them looking at me. So, well, OK, you know, big, that's not a big deal. He knows when you deal with this other issue that involves Epstein, people will gravitate to it. They'll focus on it. They won't let oh, yeah. it go. Right. And he also knows when you're dealing with kids and the trafficking of kids mm-hmm. and ultimately, in some cases, the murder of kids. Right. And God forbid, if after they're murdered, their organs are harvested and sent around <laughs> to medical facilities around the world. Right. He knows the public has no tolerance for that. And that, the, and that the public will step up in huge numbers. And I think this is why the deep state is so panicked, Corey, is oh, because yeah. they know he has them and he has them cornered and he has them cornered on an issue they can't spin out of. Right. Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> they've been they've been doing a good job the last couple of years of taking down a lot of trafficking rings and um, pedophiles. Well, we just had one here in Detroit, the, one of the Did top you? guys in Most Wanted that that's that uh, that's been doing this for years. He got taken down a couple of weeks ago or a week ago. Good. Huge, huge human trafficking, good. huge drug trafficking. Huge. Wow. Just so happened they had him busted uh, right before Obama was going to leave office. And, uh, oh, he got away at the last minute. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but but this, you is where you, this is where your work is so important, Corey, because here's why. When this all comes down, mm-hmm. we, Epstein, is our, he's done. Okay? He's done. Oh, yeah. And some of these higher level players, I think, actually are done on this. I mean, I think I, they're going to get, get, get toasted. But here's what we don't want. We don't want any of the people right underneath the, if you will, the high end, you know, whether it's a Clinton or an Obama or a whomever. We want to make sure that the people that you're speaking about right underneath, right? It's high level, but still right underneath. We want to make sure that they have been ID'd and that they also go down. Because if we yeah. don't, if those people don't go down, then you still have an infrastructure, a very evil, sinister, satanic, evil structure, uh, uh, yep. uh, infrastructure there that can rear its head again. Yeah. And this yeah, is why what you're doing, have... this is why what you're doing is so important, Corey. Yeah, because they have these networks and, you know, you've got like, for example, there's this one of the ones I didn't mention was this organization nonprofit called Catch a Fire. 
and they're working with FinTrack. And they're all together, they're working with the Clinton Global Initiative. Right. Well, one of the gals who's the director of foundation accounts for Catch a Fire used to work in the office um, for Kirsten Gillibrand. And and so, you know, you've got whether it's a And remember, she attorney. was tight. Gillibrand's family was tight with the Nexium crew. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So you've got these, you've got a young, pretty girl in her 20s, and you've got this older mother in her 60s. And, you know, you've got all these people that seem like, oh, they're just, they're just school board members. And they're, you know, one's a tax attorney or one's a lawyer. Oh, this one's a CPA. Oh, and they're such charitable people. They work for these, right? they work with these charities right. that support children, right? But these are the ones you have to watch out Boom. for because they are the orchestrators. They, instru- they are instrumental in carrying out all of the not all, but you know, some very key components to the overall operation. And they're just booked right past. And those are the people who know how the operations work, or at least, you know, portions of it that you, like you said, you don't want continuing on because they've already got this network. And all these, all these women on here, they're all friends on Facebook too. So, I mean, it's a, it's a tight knit. This is not just Oh, they serve on the board over here. Right, they're disparate. The they don't know each other. It's just all you know. You're right. creating. You're creating a network that doesn't exist. There's a network. Right. Right. Yeah. So you know, you get some of these. Some of these people, just like Marjorie Rawls Roberts. I mean, she's just such a, a a bragger. I mean, I read just a few of, of her posts and I, I just thought, Oh my God, this woman would do anything just to stand in their shadows. I mean, mm-hmm. God knows what all she's done. And coincidentally, the Erica Kellerhouse, the one, the other gal from the law firm who's on the tax documents for his gratitude for America LTD foundation. So she moved over to the Virgin islands in 2003 from New York and Marjorie took her under her wings and trained her on all the tax breaks and how everything works over in the Virgin Islands. And next thing you know, there she is doing work with Epstein. So it's no coincidence. This is all very, you know, most of the people in here actually have that have either a connection with Florida mm-hmm. or New York. And we already know they're running operations out of those two places, plus the Virgin Islands. So... Right, because if They're you look trained. at next, if you look at Epstein's hubs, right, mm-hmm. New York, right, right, Florida, mm-hmm. New Mexico, yeah, Virgin Islands, and I think he had a little operation going in Paris. Ah, interesting. I haven't read anything on that yet. Hmm. Remember where well, he? Remember where what. he? Remember where he flew in from right. when they arrested him? Right. He flew and into you know, Teterboro from Paris. So after I got through my research and started working on writing this up, there were a few things that were still bugging me. So I literally sat here for an hour and a half and I went through his entire black book. I have the unredacted version on my site. Mm. I went through every single person on there and I ran a bunch of phone numbers. I ran, um, I have an awesome background search database I use. So I've run, I, I've spent so much time in there the last few days running all these names and phone numbers. And one of the things I noticed quite a bit is it almost seems like he has more contacts in London than anywhere else. So. Which is the hub for the banking cabal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm just the criminal you know, international that. banking system. One of its bases is in London, mm. in addition to Basel, Switzerland. Right. Yeah. Oh, and that's the other thing. There's a couple of gals here, like Pamela Burkowski, for example, the Clinton appointee, and there was another one in here. I can't think of which one um, that had done some schooling over in Geneva, Switzerland. I can't think of, do you know what, what that might've been? It, it's, I'm sure it's some famous university or school over there um, in Geneva, Switzerland. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's a hub. Oh, no, so this, through the Swiss banking system, right? Yeah, well, not only yeah. that, you've got, you've got uh, Bill Gates, the Global Fund, and Gavi, and... Um, 
oh, what's the one he's right next to over there? Not not the Who, but there's another one health related. Anyways, it's it's like a huge complex campus over there where they're all just boom doing lunch together. Right. Yeah. And God knows what else together. Uh, right. Corey. Yeah. Folks need to support you. They need to follow you. How can they support you and how can they follow you? Because they need to do that. So they can follow me on coreysdigs.com. C-O-R-E-Y-S-D-I-G-S.com. Yes. And I'm on Twitter under Corey's Digs, YouTube on Corey's Digs. Uh, they can support me through uh, Patreon and um, patreon.com front slash Corey's Digs. Or through PayPal, which on PayPal, it's actually Corey without the S, C-O-R-E-Y, digs. And um, I also do a weekly podcast, and I post all the podcasts and interviews on my site under streams. And I guess that's, you know, oh, resources. So anyone who wants to learn how to use discernment, I've written articles on it. I've written articles on how to dig. There's also, I have a huge, I have over 80 resources on my site. I have files. Um, I have Epstein logs and and um, flight logs and black book and indictment and uh, testimonies from Spygate. I mean, tons of declassified docs. So if you're looking to fact check, and I have an awesome background search database on there and some other great tools, and, and most of it's open source, you know, free. Mm-hmm. Um, the sources that I have on there. So I highly recommend people start doing their own fact checking and, um, you know, learning to, to use more discernment and not just trust what others are saying. Corey, last question. You've done a, a lot of digging on this issue. Um, have you found a relationship of Epstein with Trump that you believe is troublesome or significant? No, I believe that's all been completely debunked. He's the only one who was subpoenaed that actually, you know, when this case originally was going on, was it 2007? Uh, no, 2008 and then in 2009 as well. Yeah. Okay. And he, he spoke with them and was very mm-hmm. helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, the one case that really bugged me where people were saying it kept, you know, spewing out that, oh, there was a woman or a girl, you know, who said, claimed that she was raped by him and Epstein and da da da. Okay, so I went into those that court document and I yep. pulled it. What did you find? And here's what I found. <laughs> I found a frame job is what I found. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at the, um, the dates mm-hmm. and, and how that case was carried out, mm-hmm. what happened is, first off, anyone can file a complaint. Yep. Okay, it doesn't make it true. Nope. So girl files this complaint. Then all of a sudden this attorney shows up and says, I want to represent her. I want to show up in court. She doesn't want to be there. She doesn't want to be present. Okay. Fill out all these documents. He fills out the documents wrong. Now he's an attorney. Right. So he fills them out wrong. Court gets back to him, says you need to resubmit these. So take some time, resubmit some, gets approved. Next thing you know, gets postponed again, and then a different attorney comes in. And now that attorney does the same exact thing, files the paperwork wrong. They say you have to file this correctly, files it correctly, and then boom, Gone. less than a week before Trump was nominated, case gets dropped, voluntarily yep. dismissed. Yep. But they had the narrative out there that a case was filed. Yes. A, exactly. fraudul- a fraudulent case. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But, a, but a complaint was filed, and that's all they needed to spin their little web in the bottom right. flame stream fake media. So, so the master fraudsters out there, they'll do a thread and they'll screenshot just the front page of the complaint or right. a few a few of the pages that have like the the scary words you don't you don't want to hear about, and you're in shock and awe, and and they don't show them the whole docket. They don't show them what really happened. And then they make it sound like, oh, the girl got scared. That's why she dismissed it. No, mm-hmm. no. You don't have two ter- two attorneys that don't know how to file properly and drag this out and then just suddenly dismiss it. And walk you know. away. Right. Believe right. Me. They knew. They, they... Which tells me also they knew. So a week before he was elected, th- they knew. They are they already knew that was going to happen. So at that point, just dismiss this. Now we have it on record. And believe me, if they could have been the ones to take down Donald Trump, 
in a subsection of this country, these mm-hmm. people would be icons for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. So for them, for a hatchet job attorney, to two of them, to walk away <laughs> tells you all you need to know about the validity of the case. Right. Right. And it's kind of funny, Dave, if you think about it and you look back at all of the claims that they have they have pushed out there against Trump. Mm-hmm. I mean, from everything under the sun, not one has stuck. They have all been debunked. It's it's uh, that in itself should be pretty eye opening. But then you have, you know, you have the gullible and the lazy that don't want to fact check and they're just going to believe what they see or they they believe someone who's, you know, maybe told some truths and some facts. And now they think that person's a god. So they're idolizing them and they just take their word for it. And, well, and, and that's, that's a dangerous it, game. Because well, and it's not just with Trump. We all mm-hmm. we all have faced that. Right. On this platform, we've faced this for the last couple months. Just that scenario. Exactly. You know, let's not let facts get in the way. Let's not get data in the way. Let's not get real experts in the way of what the truth is. Right. And that's what you battle. And, it, and, yeah. it's, and it's tough. And, 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 it, and it's the business model of the deep state. It is. It, the business model, that's, that's perfect. I'm right. trying to think of what... Um, it's their business model and how they take down reputable people that are trying to educate and empower the public. Yes. There was an article I did called um, Normalization, Indoctrination, and Degenderization. I highly recommend people it's great. reading. Yeah, it is. Thank you. And um, there's, um, I can't, you'll know his name that that um, was from Russia that's, spoken numerous time he was like a former spy and he's oh, he's um, uh i can't think yeah, of his I'm name even if i could have told me about, I, right. I have a clip of him yeah. in there it's it's only like 13 minutes but there's much much longer ones available on youtube and it's he explains the the four step process yeah. of of taking you know a society down and how it works and the demoralization and the normalization and um, where they get to the point um, where they destabilize mm-hmm. and, um, and and we're we're on we're seeing this, you know, we're there, we're seeing this. And so people need to realize that, like you said, this is a motto. Mm-hmm. You've mm-hmm. got some people out there that seem really smart, really savvy. They start providing information that that is in line with what we know to be truth Mm -hmm. and so 80 to 90 percent of what they're putting out there is truth they get you under their wing they build their little army and then all of a sudden months later they start flipping Mm -hmm. on journalists that are doing solid factual reporting and they try to take them out and cut them off the knees and people fall for it because now they've built up a level of trust yep and people need to be very careful with that because if you start just believing hearsay and what someone's saying without any proof or evidence to back it that's that's a red flag yep if they all of a sudden stop providing that proof there's a reason for that so people need to pay attention to that ding 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 (laughs) Corey. Diggs, I'd like to thank you, Corey Lynn, for everything you have done, are doing, and will do. You are an incredibly precious resource that the freedom movement is honored to have and is lucky to have. And I thank you, Corey, because you put a tremendous amount of time and effort into this. And frankly, Corey, you put your life on the line doing it. And you're very modest and humble about it, but you provide a service that that is absolutely imperative for the freedom movement to have to embrace to utilize because in so doing i believe we bring down the deep state in a much more expedient fashion and i thank you for your sacrifice well thank you so much dave and thanks for having me on i love talking with you and thanks for all the work you're doing you're doing tremendous work as well well, thank you. That's very kind. It means a tremendous amount to me coming from you, Corey. It, it, it means a tremendous amount because I have the utmost respect for you and what you do. 
Folks, uh, I close every segment with dream big and dare to fail, my dad's favorite say- statement. And um, the other person on this side of this interview, Corey Lynn, CoreyDiggs.com is the epitome of that statement. I thank you for your time. I thank you for joining us. Until next time, Dave Janna signing off. Dream big and dare to fail.